Hey everyone, I'm CJ. And I'm Sheldon. And this is The Long Box for March the 6th, 2013. Okay, so today we are going to start getting into our regular format for this show. Uh, with me today, of course, is Sheldon. This is, our, this is his first time yes. doing this. Mm -hmm. So, um, first off, what, what got you into comic books? Uh, what didn't? Uh, when I was a kid, <laughs> I loved everything that was on TV. Every superhero show. I loved X-Men. I loved Spider-Man, the animated series. I loved Batman, the animated series. Who didn't? If you don't, go go to jail. <laughs> um, Oh, what else? Power Rangers was a big influence for me. Everybody used to, like, what? Pretend to morph when they morphed. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, and, um, actually, I didn't. I how long the comics was. One day, I was at Safeway, a little store, you know what and I saw a Sonic the Hedgehog comic book on, um, the wall, and I asked my mom, can I, can I get that? She said, sure, it's $2, sure. And I collected a crap ton of those, except. Mm -hmm. I had no concept as a kid that um, two dollars for a comic book. God, yeah, those, those those were those were good times. Yeah, well, I had no idea that when you read comics a lot, they tend to deteriorate. <laughs> and so now I have a bunch of really really messed up Sonic comics that um, are really deteriorated. I keep them around though, just because. Yeah, I, I love. I don't read them, but I have them because I love them. I think they're great, and I was a big fan of Sonic. I still am, even though the games are iffy, say, but at best. But yeah, that's how I got into them. And um, how I got into starting, starting collecting was uh, the year I took off after high school, I took a class for went to university, and I saw that h &B had comic books. And my eyes... Let's just say I walked out of the store with $200 worth of comics. <laughs> oh right, then, right then and there. And ever since, I have uh, two shelves full of comics, oh and I haven't stopped since, you know, I kind of probably should, because I have too many, and I spend more than I have to spend. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I was thinking we do our reviews first, right? and then get into the news. Mm -hmm. So, today I am reviewing the first issue for Justice League of America. And I'm reviewing by Weapons, by Image, and Jim Robson. It's their new comic. It's, um, well, you know how it is, in a bit. Yeah, so um, I ha I can't stop but to think that this is why Jeff Johns left Green Lantern to do Justice League of America. Because if you look on the front cover, you can see that the new Green Lantern is right in front there helping to uh, raise the American flag. It would make sense he'd probably want to develop the new Green Lantern just, just to... Just to make him ice more likable, since he's so new, we haven't gotten a lot of content on him. And he's developed every other one so much that he probably wants to get this one... A few good stories. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, that, that, okay, I, I could see that. I was kind of confused, like, why he was leaving, but at the same time, I was kind of glad, because no one should have that much power over a series. Even though it was a great, he did a great job, yeah. though, yeah. Well, he, he pretty much is the godfather to the Green Lantern. He developed the energy, yeah, it's true, he did, he did develop yeah. the whole color spectrum thing, too, like, that's... Yeah. And made, made yellow a more, uh, credible weakness. Yeah, energy now, instead of... Color. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, like, between uh, Hal Jordan and, uh, Al and um, Alan Scott, you could take out both of them with a number two pencil. Yeah. So, yeah. Is, uh, anyways, uh, so do you want to go first, or should I? Oh, uh, you go first. Alrighty, so uh, keep in mind that this is the first issue, and we shouldn't expect all that much for it, because they're still just starting out the storyline. So what's happened in issue one is... They're starting to form the team. Colonel Steven, I believe that's his name? Yeah. Uh, Wonder Woman's ex-boy toy is being put in charge of the Justice League of America. And Amanda Waller starts rounding up the numbers uh, from the beginning of the comic book to the end. It starts off with Hawkman from the now-canceled Savage Hawkman series, Katana... Green Lantern, Green Arrow, and Martian Manhunter. Also, throughout the entire book, it's shown that there's we're not too sure who it is until the very end, but there's this guy running around with this kind of... I don't want to call it a samurai mask, but there's, there's really no other word that comes to mind. 
It looks. It has like the the demon look to it. Okay, I, I see what you mean. Yeah, and he's he's been you know he's bleeding out. He's severely injured, and he's like running through the woods. Um, it, between that and the office where Amanda Waller's talking to Colonel Stevens, and then flashbacks with all the different main characters. Uh, you know it. It's just explained that, you know, why why do we have all these people on one team together? They're some of the most dangerous people on the planet, and you're going to put all of them in one room. That's not a very smart idea. And I think uh, Colonel Stevens actually goes, actually says in the comic, and looks at Amanda Waller like, are you fucking crazy? Why are you doing this? And, like, with, uh, I think he says with um, something along the lines of with Hawkman alone, you know, you're just asking for trouble. Yeah. And then when she brings up uh, Martian Manhunter, he's just like, okay, now I know you're just with me. He's looking kind of a little grim. Yeah. I, I love, though, uh, the one panel where Amanda Waller brings up Wonder Woman then. He's just like, oh, well, I'm already handling this Justice League. And she's just like, well, I think you should know who Superman's been boning. <laughs> and shows a picture of, oh, uh, I can't, I think it's from the Valentine's issue. Yeah, the, with the tied up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. it's just like, Wow, Amanda, you're kind of a bitch. Yeah. Like, yeah, just, I, I just shook my head. I was like, wow, okay. Um, in all honesty, really great story. I hope they don't wind up canceling this one. I really hope they don't wind up yeah, canceling this one. I'm, I'm so psyched to finally see the Martian Manhunter yes. back in action. Well, here's the thing. Jeff Johns, Johns stuff usually turns out very good. Usually people love it. So, you know, yeah. give it... Well, with with Jeff Johns on it, it's kind of like, here's some free money. <laughs> yeah, I'm just hoping, I'm hoping Johns gets on Teen Titans personally because, yeah, that's honestly he needs somebody to fix that. Somebody, somebody needs to fix that right away. And and all, <laughs> okay, I don't I don't want to hurt your feelings. I don't think Teen Titans is uh, fixable. I think, in all honesty, I think okay, the guy I'm forgetting his name, the guy with the Pink and purple light beam powers. I don't, with him alone, it could work if Johns did something with it. But I'm just saying, they've watered down the, the team so much and watered down the characters so much. Like people who are fans of Tim, who are, who are who have Tim as a favorite Robin, that's not the Tim you love. Okay, it's not the and Tim that's you love. why I like Jason Todd. Shut up. <laughs> you could have you could have very easily burned me by bringing up issue sixteen. Oh, I could have fooled you. Yeah. did for me. Issue 16, there you go. Um, all I'm saying is, we need someone to flesh out these characters, give them give them backstory, give them... I think someone needs to work on bringing Bob Kane back to life. Bob Kane? Bob Kane, if you have... No? No? No, no. no he, was, he would... The stories he would write now wouldn't work because they would be stories that were written... To, that, you know, because I mean, right? Tim would be wearing the short shorts. Don't even talk about it. <laughs> the only reason I don't, I don't like Dick, he's Dick Grace is my favorite superhero, but he's not my favorite Robin because he didn't object to that outfit. How could you not object that outfit? Dick was wearing that, wearing that and, outfit. And in fairness, it was the 1940s. He wore that into college until the 80s, until he finally, someone finally gave him the Nightway outfit. Well, a, uh, a 20 year old, 19 to 20 year old man wearing. A green, green underwear. Well, I mean, there are all those women who strip through college. Maybe that's what. He, no, <laughs> no, no. no? Don't even there, there are a lot of fangirls out there. Who are like, oh yes. No, no, <laughs> no, no, no. All right, so uh, I guess that concludes the review for Justice League of America. Yeah. Now, um, five weapons. Five weapons. Imagine, imagine Xavier's school for the gifted. Only the gifted are kids of assassins. And these kids, um, there are five weapons to choose from at the school to, to um, specialize in. There's blades, there's blunt, there's gun, there's exotic, and... Blade? Guns, exotic. I can't remember the last one, sorry. But um, a, a new, there's a new kid at school, and he is the son of the best assassin in the world right now. I can't remember his first name, but his last name is Shai Lin. Shane... Shane Lin? I can't remember pronounced like Shane. Blah, 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 blah. It's Shane Lynn. That's what okay. it's, the way it's spelled. And um, he goes there and the first girl he meets there, her name is Jade. Um, Jade Blake, she's the captain of the knife team. And uh, 
she takes her through, and she takes him through the school, explaining what's going on, the different teams, and you tell this kid, he doesn't have a weapon to pick from yet, because he hasn't chosen yet, but you can tell in the comic, he's kind of, he's smarter than he looks. He's smarter than he looks, and he tells him in the comic, because after the um, introduction he has, he um, goes to the training field, where all of the different weapons, kids are training, and what happens is, the girl brushes, brushes by him, and she sees that there's blood in his, there's blood in his sleeve, and she's like, well, who shot the kid of the best assassin in the world? We're all, we're all screwed, because he's going to come and kill us. And <laughs> so it's, they go to the, she, she takes him to the uh, to the nurse's office, and the nurse is like, this is juice. And the girl's like, did you spill juice on your clothes to avoid picking a weapon right away? And she's like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> and basically, she's, he went there because um, the girl, she found out that she doesn't know as much as she's letting on. She's a first year student. Basically, you don't know that you don't know that until um, he tells you because he's listening to what she's saying to the principal who he meets when he first gets there. She says, "I think it's this way." And he's like, "You think it's this way, so that means you're not sure. You're new." Um, and he talks to the nurse. The nurse basically, the nurse and the principal don't see eye to eye on some things, and um, you can see that the this guy, everyone's kind of trying to get him into different clubs because you know he's the son of the best assassin in the world. And so, when he goes, I'm going to skip through a bunch, I don't want to spoil it for everyone, but anyways, near the end, he gets to a class, and the Knife Club class, and um, the girl's there, the captain of the Knife Club, Jade, who talk, showed him around, she's a bit cocky, she's trying, she's showing off, he gets there, he interrupts the lesson, interrupts the teacher, some things happen, her and the, she, the girl, she challenges him to a duel, and he's like, okay, I'll duel you, I won't use a knife though, and she's like, what do you mean, this is Knife Club, you have to use a knife. I won't use a knife, but I'm still going to beat you. And then it cuts off there. Because there's a bit of a flashback. This kid knows more than he's letting on. He's, for me personally, I think, I think being the world's, the kid, the, the oh, son of the world's God. best assassin, he knows probably how to use a knife. He knows how to use these weapons already. So probably next next issue, he's probably going to kick her ass. So is, is, is this going to be like one of those, like, I, I, I hate to use this as an example, but like one of the typical anime who, who the main character runs into all his background characters and he's either just as strong or not quite as strong, and... But when you put it that way... Then he becomes ridiculously powerful. When you put it that way, uh, I could see it becoming that, but I don't think it's going to. I hope it does Just because... Look, this image, they don't, they don't print shit. They, uh, they don't print shit. <laughs> image doesn't print shit. Um, image, I, I think he's going to go somewhere good. I, I'm interested in seeing what this kid can do. From what I can guess, he knows his stuff about knives. He knows about these weapons already because his dad is the best assassin. I'm sure he's been taught this stuff already, okay? That's the starters, right? So I, I'm looking forward to seeing what's happening in this comic. I didn't explain everything to you. I left out some plot points. Because well, I don't want to root it for you. Go read it. Pick it up. Read it. Yeah. It's looking good. Just, just as a warning, if you guys didn't figure this out on your own, uh, there's probably going to be spoilers in this. Yeah, sorry. So uh, I like to get into news if if we could. Okay, oh, wait, so and also um, today, March sixth, Hit Girl. Prelude, oh yes, that's right. Hit Girl two that came out. Prelude, hit, Prelude to Kickass two. Okay, listen, all you guys who are like on edge at the end of Kickass two. If you know what I'm talking about, what happened at the end here? This is a prelude to it. It's more Hit Girl. And you gotta love Hit Girl if you love Kick-Ass, okay? You love Hit Girl. She's your favorite character. Doesn't matter if you like Kick-Ass, you love Hit, Hit Girl, okay? Even if someone else is your favorite character, Hit Girl is your favorite character. Okay? <laughs> that's, that's how it works. Uh, anyways, this girl book, I haven't read through it yet, but I'm looking forward to it. If you love the blood and the gore and the bad artistry that is Hit Girl, pick it up. It's looking, it's looking good. Um, it's... it's it's gonna be good. I know it's gonna be good. It's, it's kick ass. And it's Mark Millar. Anyways. Anyways, uh, so the first bit of news that I have is for anyone who did not get a chance to watch our unboxing video, uh, the awesome people at Valiant sent us some posters. On one side is the Exo Man of War character, Eric, which I have to say looks really nice. Yeah. And I'm I'm definitely putting one of these up in my room. And then on the other side is the Harbinger Wars, and it has the complete list. Uh, if you would like to get your hands on one, you can send me an email, which is mctavish 
www.tvpopculture at gmail.com. McTavish is spelled M-A-C-T-A-V-I-S-H. Or you can put it in the, in the description as well. Yes, it, it will also be in the description, description box below. Simpler. So, over the past, I, I think it's been about two weeks now, mm -hmm. uh, Damien was killed. Bullshit! Anyways, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyways, uh, Damien was killed, which is unfortunate. Second favorite Robin for me, personally. Um, he he doesn't even make my top three, but whatever. He's, um, he's understandable. Anyways, uh, with this happening, DC is now releasing a bunch of other comics. Uh, Batman, Red Hood... You know, all these other comics are going to have uh, the covers, and those issues will be reacting to what's happened to Damien. Yes, I'm especially interested in seeing Dick's and Jason's. Dick, because he was a partner. He was, he was Dick's partner as Robin for a short time in the 52. But um, not only that, what happened with Dick in, in uh, Death in the Family. Like he's, yeah. He's kind of, is he, isn't he kind of broke right now? Um... I think he's really the only one who has quote unquote forgiven Bruce. Yeah, he he was at the gate. Yeah, he? like he he shows up at the gate, and like, Bruce yeah. is just like, "It's okay, you don't have. I I know you're not coming." And Taylor's he's just like, "Oh, okay." Okay, let's just the bathroom. I walked all the way here. I mean, come <laughs> no. on. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Well, I really have to use the toilet." Exactly. And I'm interested in seeing Jason, especially because Jason is the only other Robin who died. Well, actually, yeah. if, you, if you don't count Stephanie, but she's not just in existence for you, too, so she didn't mm -hmm. even die. There's a whole other thing there, but forget that. Stephanie? Who are you talking about? Yeah, who does she? <laughs> she, she wasn't a great character or anything. Anyways, um, yeah, because Jason is the only other Robin who died. Because him and Bruce are going to have a talk. And Jason's probably, probably going to be like, you know, how could you let this happen again? I yeah. died, and now you let your own son die? How could you let this happen a second time? And I, I can imagine him and Bruce getting into a big fight over this. Um, I'm, I'm expecting Jason to, like, turn around and punch Bruce in the face. Yeah, because I, I, I haven't caught up on uh, Red Hood, but did Damien and Jason have any kind of relationship at all? Kind of? Besides, Jason, Damien saw a sucker punching Jason that one time um, in his own hideout. Yeah. Yeah. Um, kind of like... I'm not sure of the best way to explain is it. Is it mutual respect, at least, or...? Kind of. I know J Damien probably some shots at uh, Jason, because... Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, I, I don't know. It was kind of, I feel sorry for the kid, and I hope he doesn't, you know, have to die before he learns mm -hmm. not to be this angry, which that probably should have been a big hint for all of us. Yeah. This guy's going to die. Exactly. One of the things I, I want to say that I think DC missed out on mm -hmm. is with Jason's death. Okay, we now all know because of the article that went up that it was in fact rigged by one of the callers. But I, I think DC missed the chance for something really big what, like, to Jason have... Again? No, no, to have people vote on whether or not Damien should die. He wouldn't have died then. <laughs> he wouldn't no, have so, someone someone could have rigged it again. Well, they, no one rigged that Jason vote, okay? No, no the, DC actually came forward and said that somebody was stuffing the inbox. Oh, well, it turned out for the best. I'm sorry, but Jason's my favorite, my favorite Robin. I love him as Red Hood. I love him as Red Hood, but he was not my favorite Robin. Uh, I don't know, I liked him as Robin. I don't think he was, I don't think he was bad, but saying he was a bit of a punk. Uh, not any more than Damien. Okay, and we'll debate this a little bit later. Yeah. And anyways, uh, IGN released a uh, article yeah. saying why Damien is quote unquote the best Robin it's ever. One, one writer, one writer, and let me just that one writer needs to uh, read some more comic books. Yeah, then, no, no. Okay, let because me, I, Damien is not the best Robin ever. He is one of the best. I'll tell you why. What the Robin was trained by the League of Assassins, trained at birth to be a killing machine, trained in. Gun killing, sword killing, acrobatics. His life was about training to be a vigilante or a mercenary or something like that. He was, he was trained at birth. No one other Robin was trained to be that skilled. Give me... Okay, Robin Jason Todd versus Robin Damian Wayne. Damian would have gutted Robin Jason, okay? Oh, gutted. bullshit. He would have gutted him. Are you kidding me? Bullshit. He would have gutted him, man, okay? Look, he... Jamie, when he first came on the scene... No... 
I'm sure people who are fans of Damien, you didn't like him at first, okay? No one liked Damien at first. He told I Alfred to... like him. He told Alfred to F off. I'm like, he was a punk kid. And, and above all people, because, I mean, he was Bruce's kid. The kid of one of the most respected superheroes was a punk. People hated that. But as... I'm talking pre-52 pre here, okay? But even translates to New 52 as well, anyways. But, um... Damien, through a lot of things, became a very respectable, good character with, who, who lived with the mental of Robin. He, he really lived up to it, and he was one of the best because of the skills he had. He was cocky because he knew a lot. Luckily, under Rusty made him because he was a kid, but as a kid, he was a smart kid. He was a skilled kid. People underestimated him. He wanted to be treated as an equal, even though he kind of should learn to respect his elders, which he did eventually, for some of them, not all of them. But anyways, Damien, for me, is my second favorite Robin because, one, his dry humor, which is his cocky dry humor, which I liked, mm -hmm. and um, his skills, and who he became. Not who he, he, he was. He doesn't even make my top three. I am CJ. And I am Sheldon. And this has been The Long Box for March the 6th, 2013. See you guys next time. Yeah.